So while waiting for the new SuperSocket 7 motherboard to arrive, I've been testing a few CPUs on this SAS board. Now from testing, it seems like this board uh, works very well, supports a wide range of CPUs and uh, is quite stable. The issue uh, with it is, is the memory performance is not fantastic. It is definitely slower than an Intel 430TX motherboard. Not significantly, but definitely measurable. So I don't think that this motherboard is getting the full performance out of these chips, but I still think it, was, it has been an interesting uh, exercise and I've got quite a few results which I'll go over uh, today. So this board's been pretty good. It's got inbuilt uh, video and sound. The sound was disabled during testing and so was the video and I used a Voodoo 3. I used a single stick of 128 meg RAM running Windows 98 SE. So I've tested seven CPUs, um, two from Intel, two from AMD, and three from Cyrex. So from the Intel, I have a Pentium 133, just the, the standard one. Then I have a Pentium 233 MMX. Then for AMD, I've got the K6 200 megahertz. Then I've got a K6 II 300 megahertz. From the Cyrex side, I have a 6x86PR200, the L version, which is the low powered version, or the lower power. I think they did a die shrink or fix some issues uh, to make it run cooler. Then we've got the MX version. So even though it says IBM, it's the same as the Cyrex. So it's the PR233. And finally, the M2, which is really the same as the MX, uh, running at uh, 266 megahertz. And this one is listed as a PR333, uh, but that's definitely pushing it. So I'll go over the results first, uh, one by one, and then I'll give a bit of a summary at the end uh, to give my thoughts on the matter. So the first benchmark is the uh, CPU Z, I think it's called Vintage Edition. Uh, this does both a CPU and uh, FPU test. This seems fairly good at just testing the CPU's raw performance. I don't think it's going to change significantly with the motherboard. I suspect it, um, I don't know, loads uh, the test into to the cache or something like that. Uh, so from, from looking at the results, it seems fairly consistent, which is great. Uh, so, yeah. So on the first uh, uh, CPU result, we can definitely see the Pentium 133 is uh, quite a lot lower than everything else. The PR200 is a reasonable step up considering that it is only uh, slightly faster in terms of megahertz. It's running at 150 megahertz, uh, though it is on a 75 megahertz front side bus. The interesting thing to me here is the Pentium 233, the K6 200, and the IBM PR233 are all very similar here from the CPU side. Then the PR333 is a, a bit of a step above. And uh, finally, the K62 is quite significantly higher. Now it is running, it is the fastest in terms of megahertz for all of these benchmarks. The PR333 is the closest at 262.5 megahertz, um, but uh, that shows in some results and, and not others. But yeah, uh, we can quite clearly see that the uh, K6 is the fastest. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the Cyrex PR200 results here. Uh, that seems to be um, pretty pretty accurate for the integer performance. So the next graph is the floating point unit from CPU-Z. Now this is an interesting one because you can see here that the Cyrex is falling behind the Intel, which again I think is 
uh, reasonably correct. This is where the Pentium really jumps above and shows that its floating point performance is quite a lot better. Uh, then we've got the K6 uh, beating the Cyrix, uh, which is interesting here because the Cyrix is running, you know, 60 megahertz faster and it's uh, not, can't keep up with the AMD one here. Uh, and to be honest, I think it's quite interesting that the Pentium 123 really is sort of keeps up with everything else, um, even though it's quite a lot slower and doesn't have MMX. And then the K6 II is way out in front. And I've seen the K6 II being a lot faster in quite a few of the benchmarks I've done, not all of them. And I suspect that a lot of the benchmarks do utilize that 3D now. So I, th this, these sets of benchmarks do kind of line up with what I would expect the overall performance to be of the chips. So the first benchmark is Quake 3 demo. This first test is at 640 by 480 with a default setting. So this keeps the, um, so the GPU, uh, CPU, GPU, um, on, uh, so the GPU not, not uh, being the limitation. I think this is though where the motherboard clearly shows its flaws. The, uh, because the memory bandwidth is so poor, I don't think some of these CPUs are really able to shine. So the Cyrex, for example, um, when I tested it in a SuperSocket 7 motherboard, I was getting uh, 18, 19 frames a second. <clears throat> so I think this test is not particularly uh, reflective of the what, what these CPUs can actually output. Saying it though, it still is very interesting that most, the four chips, the uh, the Cyrex, the 233, the K6, and the uh, PR233 are all very similar here. Um, obviously, the Pentium 133 drops back a bit, but not as much as you'd expect, considering it's quite a lot slower. And then the Cyrex here is pretty terrible. I'm not actually sure that this is going to improve much when I get a better motherboard. I think this is probably what its true performance is in this benchmark. Uh, but again, this is where the, the um, K6 II really shines. And it's not the plus version, so it doesn't have any on, on die L2 cache. So it still is dealing with, you know, slow memory performance. So I think it does have a fairly large L1 cache, which is probably helping here. And also I assume there's the 3D now as well. Next benchmark is just the same again, but in 1024. I didn't bother testing the Cyrex because it was so slow, but th these results reflect the same as the 640 by 480 in terms of the placement of the of the chips. And yeah, the I would have thought that the Intel one here would have been a fair bit faster than the Cyrex PR233. So I think once we get a, another motherboard, it'll be interesting to see. Saying that though, pretty impressed sort of with both the K6 and the Cyrex PR233, uh, considering they're both running at 200 megahertz, they are, you know, within a throwing distance of the Pentium, which was always seen as having much better floating point performance. And I do think it does, but I don't think that matters in Quake 3 as much as it did in, say, Quake 1. I think memory throughput is a lot more important, which is interesting. So the next benchmark is 3D Mark 99. This one was an odd one with the Cyrex PR200. Uh, it got 17. It's obviously something going on here. Uh, but this the, this is where the Cyrex, there's been a few benchmarks that either didn't work or were terrible. And I honestly think the CPU is, is just got some, some issues. I don't think that it, uh, it basically can run everything properly. Which I think is a little disappointing. Um, Considering the, I think the PR233 with the MX from Cyrex is significantly better. That chip is actually a lot better than I expected. So again, we can see most of the, those four CPUs, the next four CPUs are all fairly similar. Although the Intel one is definitely a bit faster. Um, and then the K6 is you know, quite significantly faster. Uh, next we jump onto 3D Mark 2000. Now this, Benchmark requires MMX technology, 
So that's why both the Cyrex and the Pentium 133 have zero scores here that couldn't run this test. Again, the Intel one is coming out ahead of the other four in the pack. And the K6 II is just way out ahead, you know, almost double the performance. And again, this, this benchmark has definitely got 3D Now um, instruction support. And that makes a big difference. And it is, it is crazy how much uh, that, di that difference is, is apparent. Now, the next benchmark here is Unreal Tournament. This is the outlier of all the benchmarks. I ran this at 1024, which probably I should have dropped it a bit lower, uh, but uh, it was running with, with Glide, um, and you can definitely see some separation here. So I, I don't think that the video card was bottlenecking it. This is another test where the Cyrex PR200 would not run, it simply crashed. I need to do a bit more research to see if that is just a, a flaw with the CPU or if I there's a, a known bug or there's a patch I need to run to make it work, but it would not run um, Unreal Tournament, which was disappointing. The interesting thing here is that the Cyrex PR333 beat all bugs. No, that may match the K62300. And it was significantly faster in this than a lot of the other tests done. Now, this, if you look at raw clock performance, is kind of what you would expect. And in fact, you would actually think that the K62 would be out higher because it is running at 300 megahertz. But the, the Cyrex definitely uh, did very well here. Um, the, again, the Intel did a, a good job. But uh, the PR200 and K6, both fairly similar performance there. And then the final test is CPU Mark. This one's just a little Windows benchmark. Um, I think, again, it loves uh, L1, L2 cache. The Cyrex PR333 obviously out in front. It is running with a, a faster front side bus. All other CPUs are 66 megahertz. Front side, uh, all other CPUs are 66 megahertz front side bus, except the PR200, that's also a 75 megahertz front side bus. So this one's interesting because the Cyrex is so far out. And also interesting is the Cyrex PR200 keeps up with the Intel Pentium 233. So this one, yeah, I'm not sure this one is a very useful test. Uh, I think I'd like to add some additional productivity tests, maybe MP3 uh, encoding to get that side of things. And this is probably a useful test to show where the CPUs will be placed for that. But I think the for most things, this benchmark is not that useful. So to give a bit of a summary, I honestly was really impressed with the Cyrex uh, MX chips and the M2. Uh, I, I, from everything I read back in the day, the Cyrex had such a bad name. Now that may have come from this PR two hundred chip, the non MX version, because that this, this chip is it seems pretty terrible, and I'm kind of surprised that there's such a jump between that and then the MX version. So I'd like to do some more investigation into that in future, uh, but that'll be a separate video. The K6 I'm pretty happy with. The standard K6 runs really nicely, especially at only 200 megahertz. That's a really good CPU. The Intel one is an interesting one. The floating point performance is obviously decent, uh, but overall doesn't keep up with a lot of these other chips for other benchmarks. Uh, um, I mean more for like the higher end clocked ones like the um, K62 and the PR333. So definitely it, it, it sticks with the K6 and the the MX chips, but it doesn't, doesn't really step up to that super socket level performance for a lot of benchmarks there. And... The Intel Pentium 133, I think, did pretty well, considering it is quite a lot slower. Definitely not half the speed of, say, the 233. 
and that comes down to you know the motherboards the probably limitation the cache is the same speed on the l2 the front side bus is the same you're not going to get huge huge uh, improvements necessarily you'll have a bottleneck somewhere so yeah that's the breakdown of the the cpus uh, and um yeah I, I think the the mx so the m2 333 and the k62 definitely by far the best cpus I feel of the bunch, uh, but personally, the the K six two three hundred is definitely the best. Now, I tried to run a K six two four hundred on this motherboard with a sixty six megahertz front side bus, uh, but it didn't post, so I'm not sure if there's a limitation somewhere. Uh, but if you've got this SAS board, uh, the the K six two is definitely the the best CPU, and then. Uh, following that, the uh, Cyrix M2 is definitely not a bad chip to have uh, for this machine. So with the new motherboard when it arrives, I am going to expand the number of CPUs I test. And I am, th as I said, thinking about adding another benchmark or two that are not necessarily game related. So a couple of the other CPUs I'd like to test is the AMD K5. Uh, I've got a AMD K6 3 Plus, and this is the mobile version with a 1.6 volt core. So I should be able to run that at 600 megahertz. So that'll be a beast, I'm sure. This is an interesting one, the wind chip. This is just the first wind chip, and it runs at 200 megahertz. I'd love to get my hands on a wind chip too, uh, but I don't have one of those. I don't even know if this wind chip works. But all the pins look good, so I'll be interested to see how that goes. Based on what I've read, it really is more like a 486, and the floating point is terrible. So I think it'll struggle to even match the Pentium 133 in a lot of benchmarks. Um, I'm gonna. This is my faster Cyrix that I own on Socket 7, and this is running at 250 megahertz, so slightly less than this one but it's running on a 100 megahertz front side bus. So it runs at 250 megahertz. So that'll be interesting. The extra front side bus performance may help. Uh, it helps in certain stuff and, and not in others. Uh, potentially with Quake, it might actually be quite a quick chip. And also I have a PR333 in 83 megahertz version as well. I'm not actually sure if I'll test that one. This seems to run very similar to this one. This one's the 75 megahertz version. I'll also probably throw in another couple of K62s. I, I'd love to get a like a 266 two and also maybe like a 450 megahertz in there as well. I know the K62s at the higher megahertz sort of don't see the same performance increases, um, but they are definitely worth adding in. I also have a, a K63 non plus that runs at 400 megahertz, so I might put that in as well. So, yeah, uh, if anyone has any benchmarks they'd like to see or suggest, um, but otherwise, I'll keep with what I've posted so far and probably add another couple. So, I think, as I said, that's probably still a month off, but uh, this has been a good start, um, and I will be interested to see how much of a bottleneck this motherboard was for some of these benchmarks. I think some, it'll be quite big, like Quake 3, whereas others, like some of the synthetic benchmarks like CPU-Z, uh, won't make a huge difference. Anyway, thanks for that, and uh, we'll catch up soon.